ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, and let's not forget the fish and accomplices. You know who you are as always. Good morning and welcome back to fishing. So we are changing up the scenery today. It is the very beginning of August and we are upstate for a couple days, a few days. I don't know really how many yet. And we are in the Finger Lakes region and we are gonna try and get on some trout action. Um, I would have loved to have gotten here a few months earlier, but I had some stuff going on, which I won't get into, which made that impossible. Uh, so we're here in August and I've never fished the lake that I'm about to go in August, but I have a strong feeling that if I do what I usually do, uh, my instincts are generally pretty good and we can get onto some lake trout. So what we're looking to do is some vertical jigging of soft plastics and potentially some blade baits, which I'll go over when I'm in the water. Um, but we're gonna be targeting 50 to maybe 80 feet of water. That's the deepest this particular lake is. Uh, it's worked well for me last July and it's well, worked well for me in the past. So please stay tuned because you know what we are about to do. Get some fishing accomplished. Okay, we are on the water. Beautiful, beautiful conditions, a little breezy. Uh, it's supposed to be pretty hot out today, but unlike the rest of this week, it doesn't look like there's any chance of thunderstorms. So for the Finger Lakes, this is one of the smaller ones. And since it's August and it's about as warm as it's gonna get this year with maybe, you know, early September being the exception, we're gonna go into deeper water and try and find some lake trout. And if you watched any, any of my older vertical jig and lake trout videos, it's the same general strategy. Just really keep your eyes glued to the fish finder. We're seeing some marks in the midwater column, but what we're looking for is stuff more towards the bottom. Um, if we were looking for brown trout or rainbows or maybe salmon, the middle of the water column is a bit better, but lake trout, we're looking at the bottom. Um, the other thing we're looking for is blobs of, or giant schools of bait fish, which actually we're seeing one right now, but it's pretty close to the surface. so. Not exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for stuff that's gravitating towards the bottom. So we're gonna get to some of the deeper portions of the lake, looking at 50 to 80 feet of water, but really we're trying to press towards 80, which will be the coolest water in the lake, I'd imagine. And there's a good school bait right there. Let's see if we can find that and eventually pull some Lakers out of it. Okay, we're about 70 feet over the water. Over, We're about 70 feet over the bottom right now. And I think I just marked something near the bottom. So we're gonna try here for about five minutes and that's about as much time as I'll give a spot that I'm not sure of. That mark, probably a lake trout, but not 100% certain, but either way, I don't like to put all my eggs in one basket. So drop it down, try and stay as tight to where we marked that fish originally. And then uh, if it takes, great. If not, we pick up shop pretty quick. Oh yeah, we definitely got something down there, right under the boat. Okay, same general idea, still looking for lake trout. It's been rough, been on the water for over an hour, no real action. Downsizing to a half ounce jig head and a more traditional Kitek like soft plastic. Let's see if this makes any difference. Just like in salt water, sometimes downsizing makes all the difference in terms of profile. See what happens. Yeah, so as I mentioned in the video clip, um, you generally want to work the t bottom one-third of the water column and looking for lake trout, and that's exactly what I did. I started pretty deep and was able to find a few marks, but just couldn't make anything hit. Uh, I did get a late start in this episode, so that might be part of it, but it was really slow at first. I was looking all over the lake to try and find a biting fish and couldn't quite do it. Uh, but this changed when I eventually started to move from the deepest water in this lake to something a bit less deep. You know, I was started finding giant schools of bait in 40 to 60 feet of water, and I noticed some fish were, you know, working under them, and that's where I finally started to get into some action. All right, it's going to be it. I can feel it. It's going to be a good one. So much bait right here.
Got him. Got him. Knew it. Feels nice. Pretty shallow too. There he is. Nice fish. Starting to wrap himself up. Not good. He was shallow too, like, <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves. Easy, easy, easy. Let's go. <laughs> nice. He was right where I expected him to be, right, under, right inside that school of bait. Gonna keep him in the water. Get a quick measure and then get him out of here. Not a bad fish. Not at all. Not huge. Got a messed up eye. All wrapped up around the net. I'm gonna get bit. Let's get him unhooked and we'll put him back in. Yeah, burp all that air out. Easy, easy, easy. Let him chill out for a sec. Clear the hook. All right. Nice fish. Probably like 24, 25 inches. Let's see. Uh, I'm just about 24. Not my. Not a huge fish, but a nice fish. There it goes. Okay, we've been at it for a few hours now, and that was our first landed fish. We've had a couple misses. Uh, but yeah, the, the key to finding that fish, it was a lot shallower than I was expecting today to find lake trout. Uh, it's about 40 feet of water. In fact, I'm marking some more right now. Uh, but yeah, just finding the bait, find the bait, find the fish, and there's just giant schools of bait just stacked in like 40 to 50 feet of water. So just throwing this little Kai Tech or medium sized Kai Tech four inch or five inch fat impact shad, half ounce jig head, get it to the bottom and just slowly start making your way back up. And it's kind of been the, the name of the game. So let's see if they're getting another one. All right, another big school of bait. Let's see if we can get another nice fish. see fish like right under it it's what you want to see if you want to catch lake trout from a jig all right so since we are upstate the the seltzer of the day of course is a Wegmans brand paying tribute uh, as always when we're up here and it's one of my favorites the ginger so definitely on the list I think ginger seltzer or especially ginger mixed with something is the way to go Speaking of things that the way to go, definitely one way to go is to like and subscribe to this channel and like the video, of course. Uh, if you've already done so, thank you. And if you haven't done so, please consider doing so. Let's continue with the action. Come on. Big school bait. This is like a sure thing if we can get a good hit. Should get a hit. I'm sure we won't. Felt like that. Little little fish. Small mouth. That <laughs> figures. <laughs> well, 
plot thickens. Just hooked a nice, well, a little small mouth in the last uh, drop. Not what we're looking for, but I'm happy for any action. And there could be some really large fish in here too. At another lake, I had a very similar thing happen once and hooked some very, very nice small mouths. But there's definitely some trout down there. Feel big, but it's something. It's probably a bass. It's coming up. Large mouth. <laughs> Vertical jigging the freshwater bass. Go figure. Try again. All right, we're giving the shallowish water a bit of a break because while well, there's fish there, a lot of them are bass. And if they were huge bass, that'd be one thing, but a lot of them just aren't that big. So we're going deeper again. Right now we're in about 70 feet and we marked at least one fish, it looks like unless they're false, uh, false positives. And since we're going deeper, we're back on the three quarter ounce Elias Shad. If nothing does with this, you can, we can always mix it back up and attempt the half ounce, but I'm not sure that'll be quite as good a, at, at sticking to the bottom. So we'll see what we can do. like a respectable fish. That's definitely more respectable than the last one. Oh yeah. Just tried to stay right on top of that fish. It was not easy with the wind, but we managed. And this is not a bass, I can tell you that much. Got some good violent lake trout head shakes. Got some weight to this fish. Oh, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, all that grinding will pay off. We can get this baby. Don't want to rip this out of his mouth. I say this all the time, but I'm just fingers crossed, not a foul hooked fish. This fish isn't foul hooked or like gift wrapped. It's a solid one. Perhaps even approaching double digits. I'm getting them up slowly but surely. In a whole nother league of that other, compared to that other lake trail, that's for sure. <laughs> Heck yeah. I tell you what, if I couldn't saltwater fish, this would be my go-to fish for the summer on the kayak. No question. Don't be foul hooked, that's all I ask. No foul hook, no gift wrap, and we're in business. Even if it is foul hooked, it's way bigger than that first one we got. It's a nice fish, it's not a huge fish. He's nice. <laughs> Heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> That's why we came here. Oh yeah, he choked it. Choked that Elias shed. Right, let's get him unhooked and back in the water. 
Okay, hopefully we got that whole fight. GoPro battery, I think, was like on its way out. Uh, we're gonna try and get this guy without overly handling him. <clears throat> keep him in the net, keep his slime coke. This is one of those slime preserving nets. But yeah, let's not touch the gills, because we know no one wants to see that. Especially not this guy. All right, that's that. We're just gonna dip him back in for a sec and get this tangle out of here. And then get a quick measure and picture and back home to chillax. All right, back goes that way. This goes this way. Yeah. Okay, let's find our measure right here. Dip it in. Get this nice lake trout in the boat. Holding that. All right. Nice fish. Not the ideal measure, but this one just almost touching 28. Let's uh, do one of these. All sorts of insanity right now. Solid. Probably seven or eight pounder. Get a quick revive. Come on. There he goes. He's good. All right. Solid. Okay. Just got a really nice lake trout. About 70 feet of water. And I actually just dropped it back down because I'm marking another fish right on the bottom in about 80. Uh, so let's see if we can get another one real quick. That was exactly what we were looking for. But you know what? They can get even bigger. So let's see if this 80 foot down fish is what we're gonna get and hopefully it'll be big. Oh, come on. That was a bite. Oh, that was another bite. Right where I expected him to be. Right where I marked him. Come on, right in his face. Keep missing this fish, and I only get a shot at it, like right when I go over it. So we're gonna try and reposition one more time and see if we got one more shot at this fish, because it has not moved. Go right over his head in his face and hopefully that'll do what needs to be done. All right, that pretty much wraps it up for this session. Overall fun time, uh, definitely tough conditions. Um, the heat plus just not getting an ideal start time, but we kind of stuck to our gut and took some chances and because of that, we got on some decent fish. So yeah, that, that second lake trout really turned things around for us. Um, yeah, this will be one of my outings while I'm up here. I'm hoping to get on the water at least once, maybe twice more while I'm up here, depending on how things go. Um, and at least one of those sessions I'm hoping will be a different lake, but we'll see what happens with my schedule and just how ambitious I'm feeling. So thank you as always for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate it. Uh, and not, again, at no cost to you, but if you don't want to, that is your prerogative. Catch in the water next time, and of course, goodbye from fishing.